For more on Boris Yeltsin's legacy, let's now talk to Fred Weir, Moscow-based Canadian journalist and Russian affairs expert. Well, now, you lived in and worked in Russia in the 1990s. What was it like to be a foreign journalist under Yeltsin's leadership? Well, um, it was a very turbulent time, as, as your package just showed. Um, we had um, any number of really serious crises. Um, I remember <clears throat> 1992, for example, the year... The first year after the collapse of the Soviet Union was a time of hyperinflation, uh, extreme political turmoil. The, the political system that Yeltsin inherited uh, was unstable. And um, <clears throat> he himself, his, his personality, I think it has to be said, contributed to the confrontation that developed between him and the parliament which was uh, a freely elected parliament, the last one uh, that Russia elected in the Soviet times. Uh, it was the parliament that vaulted Yeltsin into the presidency, but he found it uh, very difficult to share power. Um, and that led to the event you didn't see uh, on, on the screen. Um, you, saw, you saw Yeltsin in the 1991 crisis where he got up on a tank and addressed the that was the time of the putsch and the collapse of the Soviet Union but barely two years later he ordered tanks to attack that same building uh, and drive out the parliament uh, in a mini civil war in downtown Moscow which I remember uh, pretty well because I nearly got shot myself um, <clears throat> and that led to um, I think what you could call a, a, a uh, he, he rewrote the constitution to make it much more centralized and authoritarian. It's the same constitution we have today. Uh, and it led to a, a concentration of power in the Kremlin and, and uh, loss of any kind of parliamentary sovereignty. Um, this is part of Yeltsin's legacy too. Uh, basically he managed an incredibly turbulent time and I guess that's what people are giving him credit for today. But um, I if you're asking me, and I suppose you will, I, I think that he, he could have done it a lot better. All right. Well, you're talking about all the political turmoil, you yourself almost getting shot. We had a lot, you saw a lot of corruption, a lot of crime. Now, do you think all these things could have been avoided at that time? Probably not. Now, let, let's face it, uh, a huge super state came crashing down, and um, all semblance of order came unstuck. The whole ideology of the Soviet Union ceased to have any any moral force on people, and uh, you know the authorities uh, had to reestablish themselves. And in this context, you see, I don't think that much of that could have been avoided. Everybody blames Yeltsin, uh, and with some reason, I think. But the the narrow way in which I would blame Yeltsin is that he was not. Uh, personality. He wasn't in his heart a Democrat, didn't understand the notion of democracy, and he didn't really think so about the problems of transition. He had people around him who did, uh, but he himself was, for, for much of his uh, early years, he wasn't, how shall I, I put this, always sober. All right. And for the rest of it, the time, he was so sick. He had heart disease and, and he was constantly out of the public eye. And so he probably, uh, through maybe through no fault of his own, didn't manage. All right, well, very interesting insight. Must have been a very interesting time to be working as a journalist back then. That was Fred Weir, Moscow-based Canadian journalist and Russian affairs expert.